Here we are then. This is Flump. She's in foal. She was a Dartmoor cross mare um, and she was very, very feral. <laughs> couldn't get more feral. Couldn't get near her. She's pictured here with her halter on, but that's after about an hour and a half showing her some basic positive leadership skills, focusing mainly on leading her to gain her trust. I, I couldn't put a rope on her. I couldn't put a halter on her. We had um, a yard area uh, I suppose it was about 40 by 40 and um, it just was me trying to gain her trust and gradually she did begin to trust me and then we were able to put a halter on and honestly then she was just like butter, dearest thing. Um, she let me tri trim her front feet quite calmly with the rope on the floor. No, I didn't want anybody tying her up. I, I, the owner was um, not in, I mean she was there but she wasn't next to Flump. I, it was just about me and Flump. Um, so, yeah, that's what it needs sometimes. Um, I trimmed her front feet first and uh, we had to come back and trim her hind feet a couple of days later because I just called the day. She'd had enough. I didn't want to cause any more stress to her and her foal, unborn foal. And, um, yeah, so I came back a couple of days later and we finished the job off and I know she was extremely grateful. <laughs> so here's her front right before trimming. You can see that it's it's overgrown. Um, the toe is long. The heels are underrun. Basically, she's, she's created a rocker shoe for herself. Um, and this had probably been going on for quite some time. Now, for a feral pony to get into this state where the feet end up looking like this... She's not been out marching around doing what ordinary feral ponies do. So she has been confined. I don't know because I don't know her history. I don't think the new owner knew her history. But she had not been out wearing these feet clearly. And she'd also not had her feet trimmed. So goodness knows what had, uh, you know, what things had happened to her beforehand. Um, this is a shot of her front left that had been trimmed and her front right that hadn't. And you can clearly see what a difference. At least two or three inches had come off at least. Um, heels were back and nice little roll on the front. Now there's no titivating there. You can see it looks a tiny little bit rough. Nice bit to be smoothed off, but there was no time for titivation here. It was a case of let's get this job done under the least amount of stress possible. Remember when I got to this stage, She'd actually been um, with me for a good couple of hours. Once I actually got her trust and I started trimming, that was quite a quick job. But like I said, we had to take it easy with her. Um, she's still got, <laughs> she's got little hooves in there somewhere. You can see those little tiny hooves. But but by goodness, look at the size of the, the one on the right there. So this is a side shot of the same. So her front left's done. You can see where the heels have come right back. And you can see compared to the front right where the heels are definitely under and she's leaning over as well. She's got a bit of a wry going on on that front right. Now, what's really important with overgrown hooves is that you don't try, you don't, you look at them from the top and go, oh, yeah, they need to trim. But you never, ever, ever trim anything from the top. You trim them from below. So you pick up your horse's foot and the first thing that you do is you gauge where the hard sole plane is. And once you've got the hard sole plane, everything else comes into place quite easily. So again, that is a shot of a back foot. You can see where the top part of the hoof is trying to grow nice and straight and then it just takes off. Oh, it's a huge, great big clog that she's got there. Um, and that's a, a good shot of the two hind feet together. Um, poor mare had been walking around like this for quite some time. You can see the hind right was curling up, but the hind left wasn't really curling. It was rying. So she had rye feet, under run feet, rocking feet, poor thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, she needed some help. Uh, this is a side shot again of these feet. Just that point of heel where she's walking around on and rocking about. I tell you what though, even though she had these feet, she could... She could shift if she wanted to. <laughs> um, so let's have a look at the fronts done. Right, so these are the two fronts that are largely finished. Uh, she walked away totally sound, incidentally, after this. There was no lameness, not one 
step of lame, lameness. You can see there that there are some rings on her feet, but actually they're not crazy. So perhaps the first thing that people might think when they come across hooves like this is that, oh, this must be a really laminitic pony. Not at all. She wasn't actually. She had had some inflammatory bouts in her feet, but you know, one good trim, the right diet and lots of movement. And these feet would largely look, largely look after themselves and absolutely, you know, would probably not need much trimming after that at all. Um, let's have a look at another photo. Okay, this is another side shot. This is the day I came back to do her hinds. This is a few days after the fronts were finished and we were ready to come in and start doing the hinds. I, I really did want to do the hinds on the same day, but after we'd finished, it, it had been exhausting for her and I really needed to, I'd, I'd already taken out a massive great chunk of my day and I really needed her to have a bit of a rest. Um, she was going to be fine. She'd been like that for absolutely forever. So a few more days um, wasn't ideal, but it wasn't going to be the end. So here they are. Here are these hind feet. You've got rye going on. You've got curling going on. She's The, the, the stress on the joints um, over a period of time must have been enormous. So it didn't take me long on the second visit to gain her trust. The owner in between times had been trying to handle her a little bit, nice and gently with positive reinforcement and lots of nice little treats and things. And um, she was a lot more amenable, a lot quicker when I came back to do her the second time. So um, she'd just been really, really defensive and scared. She'd lash out um, with her hind feet and not let anybody near him, near the hind feet. So you can see I'm just slightly standing away there, just a little cautious because this is the first time I've got hold of her hind feet. But you can you can see her face; she's on me, she's concentrating, and I, you know it's hard for her to stand on that right ride roly foot um, and let me pick up that that left one. And that's another reason why animals will lash out because they don't feel balanced. They don't feel balanced at all. Um, and if you're struggling picking up feet on horses like this or horses that have got twisted feet, rye feet, high-low syndrome feet, you have to make sure that their balance is spot on before you even try and pick up a foot because they will just try and kick you because they're f really afraid of falling down. And then, of course, they get a bad reputation um, that they're just kickers. But in actual fact, if you go around it in the right way, that's not the case at all. So this is a, a more of a close-up shot of the hind foot. And you can see that really long toe. You can see the amount of hoof that needs to come off. And you can see the long bars. The heels are starting to crack, contract inwards. Um, and that's just a mess, really. She's got quite fungly th frogs, mainly because there's just no activity going on back there. The, the hoof, the, the heels have just overgrown. And the and everything has just gone forward. So the first thing that you do is you have to find that hard sole plane and you can see uh, a little bit of the sole peeking up through that the dirt there, which is the white part, and it's going down to the hard bit. You're not scraping away stupidly, but you have to go down to the hard sole plane. It's nice and waxy. Um, and once you find that, it really is just a process of bringing the hoof wall and the heels down to that hard sole plane. But of course, that just sounds easier said than done when you start picking up tools and doing it yourself, which is where training comes in <laughs> to hand. But in there is a tiny little foot. So she's got this massive great clog, but there is a tiny little foot lurking in there. So away I go and I'm finding the hard sole plane and um, you can see it's nice and bright and white now. Um, I, I'm not doing a massive amount of knife work on the sole. Uh, because it didn't need to, it was all flaking away. What I'm doing there is just removing the bars because her bars were overgrown. Um, at no time was Flump ever tied up or restrained in this in this series of photographs. The whole time I was with her, the rope was either lying on the ground or, well, yeah, actually it was lying on the ground because she didn't like it over her. But um, if she needed to move around, I just let her. It, it, it was just about me and her the whole time so I could just gain her trust 
and she can have all her focus on me. And when I'm in this kind of zone, I, d- I don't I don't really like to have a good chat with other people. I don't want to chat with anybody. I don't want to chat with the owner. It's just me and Flump concentrating on the job in hand. I'm on her and she's on me and and that way we get the job done. Um, and it, it proved that she didn't need to have sedation to have her feet trimmed. So this is now a shot showing that her near hind is now finished and her off hind is next. She must have been thinking, goodness, you know, apart from anything else, look how she was up on stilts on those rocking feet. And now she's down on a proper little foot. And that hoof pastern axis, which we're always talking about, which is how farriers, um, and I, I hate to say this, but it is farriers that are trained to trim to the hoof pastern axis. She had one naturally. The trouble is if you trim to the hoof pastern axis, in other words, you trim from the top, you're looking at it and you're trying to adjust the heels so that you can get that hoof past an axis right the problem with doing that is that you can get yourself into some serious hot water because of course you are dealing oftentimes with uh, feet that are distorted you always have to trim from below you always have to trim from the hard sole plane and once you've done all that you and you you then look at the hoof from above and it's distorted well that's now the owner's job to grow out that that distortion by changing the diet and the management uh, and then the hoof pastern axis will grow in naturally so that one's finished now um, that's another shot another view of the finished near hind with the off hind still to do again what a difference for this little pony uh, again look at those rings they are there but then, and they are they are fairly consistent. So she's been grazing on grass for no for absolutely sure. I I feel like I should just call them grass rings, really, <laughs> because because really, um, I mean, okay, you get them in with rye haylage and and rye, but but grass is your biggest enemy when it comes to inflammation in the body. It really is. Okay, so let's moving on. There's me picking up her off hind before a trim um looking at it again she's starting to sh- to to chop it off a little bit the 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 wall and the toe she's starting to chop it off a little bit herself but you know it's it's just a testament to how trusting she was and i truly truly believe she knew that i was trying to help her because she was just standing rock solid she did have to move around occasionally but i think you or i would if we'd been standing around and odd weird clumpy clogs like that for for goodness knows how long um and here's the finished product here is flump i'm sorry it's not a better photograph than that but there she is with all four feet trimmed and what a lucky pony to get an owner who cared enough to find the right kind of person to come along and help trim these feet so the the biggest take-home message with flump is that you really just do need to uh, with any overgrown hooves is that you just start looking from underneath never from the top you don't go and get sores and goodness knows what else to start chopping off those toes because what's important is the heels and the hard sole plane getting those heels back getting those bars back and of course balance and that comes with practice that comes with a lot of practice what i'm trying to do is trying to get you to to view a foot okay look at it from a top but really start viewing it from below it's from below that makes all the difference to an animal because that's the bit that hits the ground so that's the bit that needs to be balanced and it needs to be the heels need to be in the right place and the toe needs to be in the right place so she's finally finished and she's a very chilled out little pony and when you think previous to this she was completely untouchable you couldn't get near her and there she is standing there like little miss proper dear of her lovely little pony i enjoyed trimming her little trotters um it was a good job i enjoyed trimming flump it um i felt that this is what i'm here for to help horses like this and in fact actually it was a wonderful thing for the owner because she was terrified that she was really badly laminitic and now when i saw her i said i think you'll find that this pony isn't that laminitic um she's had some episodes little inflammatory episode but but she's not serious so 
you'll see when we get get our feet trimmed so there we go there's little flump